As I looked at the word exceptional, I read descriptives like not ordinary, uncommon, not like most others of their type, unusually good, outstanding, and rare. Those are all perfect descriptions of Dr. Rama Prasad and his caring for his patients in this community and surrounding communities. Dr. Rama, as his patients like to call him, because most of us can't say it, <laughs> he's Dr. Rama. I want to share just a couple of things about him that he would never tell you because, you know, he's really, really good at what he does and he's pretty humble. So even when you talk to him about the great work he's done or try to compliment him, he always wants to give credit to the cath lab team or his team in his office or our ER folks. Um, you know, he wants to give credit to those folks and that's great because it takes a great team, but it takes a great leader to put those teams together and do the great things that, that we do at Morristown Hamlin and that Dr. Rama helps with every day and leads. But I want to tell you about Dr. Rama. Um, he graduated first in his class in medical school, top of his class, very first. He also received the best intern award his first year of residency. And his last year of residency, he was the chief resident. Now, all this was at a school that had not accepted a foreign student in over seven years. But they accepted Dr. Rama and he came in and just kind of showed out. <laughs> he maybe changed the precedent a little bit from that point, you think? And then he did his um, cardiology fellowship in New York. And immediately after finishing his cardiology fellowship in 1995, he came here to us. He has dedicated his entire life as a physician to caring for the people in Morristown and surrounding communities. Dr. Rama will be completing his 25th year of service to this community this year. A quarter of a century dedicated to providing exceptional care. And how appropriate is it that we are honoring him with this award at such a milestone in his life. During those almost 25 years, listen to this guys, Dr. Rama's been on call 24-7. It's not like we have a plethora of cardiologists in Morristown. He's been available all those years, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have a saying at MHHS, if somebody comes into our hospital with a heart problem, Dr. Rama comes out of the woodwork. <laughs> he literally appears from nowhere, just like that. We're like, where, where did he come from? Is, was he sleeping in the back room? He always gives credit to others, as I said. He's always very humble, but because of his dedication and because of the great work of our teams, hand in hand with Dr. Rama and MHHS, our door to cath lab time, or we also call it door to balloon time, is that thing Anthony talked about where they get you in there and get those stents in you? We beat the national average, the national standard, by almost half. Half the time that everybody else around. <laughs> that, my friends, equals many, many, many lives saved. And we are so proud to be able to say that and to have the quality of care that we do at Morristown Hamlin. Dr. Rama, Thank you for your commitment to us. You are very deserving of this award. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand and help me as we present the exceptional commitment to healthcare award to Dr. Sunil Rama Prasad. Thank you, that was uh, 
very nice of you to say all these things, and I'm sure you must have spoke to my wife to get some details. <laughs> and and she, she, she sometimes has the hyperbole, and she makes up things, but... Uh, uh, Really, I mean, this feels like the Oscars, and uh, I hope there's not going to be any music in the middle. I'm going to be cut off uh, all the time. Okay. Very good. Hey, so when I, but oh, I know Anthony took a lot of time. So Anthony for a second. So really, this uh, lifetime commitment is not a commitment of any physicians. I mean, I see many physicians here who commit their life day and night, who are on call. I might be a crazy guy who likes to be on call and do things which I like to do. I might have a passion, a drive, a dream. But really, it's what you all do to support this cause. And I was thinking about whom should this commitment award go to? Really, it's the community. In 1995, we came to Morristown, and uh, I remember my friends in New York saying, you're going to go to some little town in Morristown, Tennessee. Maybe you won't be accepted there. I mean, that was never the issue. Fortunately, there was no competition, so I was accepted. So I think, uh, I think, uh, I think it was always a good thing. So there was no competition, and, and there was always some competition. And when the competition comes, I always tell my kids, "Step it up, so you can get rid of the competition." <laughs> so, and uh, the next important thing is the hospital. We have uh, Covenant Hospital system here. Mark, I can't thank you enough, and Gordon. Whenever I go in with a problem with Gordon, he has the most unique solutions. And we will listen to one, I will tell you about one of his solutions, which is quite unique, and uh, we'll find out how he did it in a couple of minutes. So, so Jackie, she, she caught me the other day, a couple of weeks ago, when I was getting out of the elevator and said, Dr. Rama, do you have a minute? She was wearing these 12-inch heels and running after me, and I said, Jackie walked with me. So, so we walked from the cancer center to my office and somewhere in the middle of the parking lot did you realize what you were telling, that you were going to give me this achievement award and then she said the board had a unanimous approval they wanted you to be and then I looked at who was on the board for this gala and it's good to have friends in uh, good places. So, so thank you board. So, so I'm going to tell you about, uh, so 1995, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law are here. My sister is the chief of pediatric cardiology. I always like to say that. Uh, she's in Johnson City Medical Center. I think I have a bad job, but she has even a more demanding job. And she had heard about this uh, opportunity. She must have read from the newspaper or somewhere. And she called me when I was in New York and said, hey, there's a Morristown, Tennessee. So we didn't know where it was. And we were busy looking at the map. And we were glad we found it on the map. So, so but look at how much we have grown. I mean, we even have Fazoli's now, shall we? Uh, so kids, kids can come back. So, so I'm going to talk to you about a little, about some special people here. This is a table where many of my, some of my patients, whomever I invited, they came. And we'll talk about Anthony. Anthony talked about me, but I want to talk about Anthony because he's a fairly important guy. If you go to Anthony Kimbrough and Google him, I hope I can say this, <laughs> Anthony, and he has a nice blog about what's called a near-death experience. Yeah. So in one of his first heart attacks, was it his first? Uh, yes. First. I mean, thank God, he's only had two. The first yeah. heart attack, so far. he came in, and we were in the middle of, I mean, we are all nervous, but it's just a sense of bravado we put on. I mean, we are, we are all nervous, as nervous as you are, but but in the middle of everything, he had a ventricular fibrillation arrest, and we were about to shock him, but somehow the defibrillator fell off the table, the plug came off. So what would it take? And usually 30 seconds took us a minute and a half for it to plug back, and then shock Anthony back to life, right? So in this minute and a half, Anthony had a unique near-death experience, and uh, he has written about it, he has blogged about it, he has been to invited by NBC, I think you went to New York or Charlotte or? Uh, we went to Fox and then... Uh, oh, Fox, sorry, Fox. <laughs> and, then we, and then we were on the Biography Channel. Biography Channel, so I mean, uh, it's, as, as you mentioned, it's a teamwork and it's uh, nothing but teamwork and uh, there was always somebody looking after you, Anthony, that, that night. It was Denise in the cat, cat room because uh, I usually don't tell any family members, but Denise wouldn't take no for an answer. So he had to be there. So, but it's more than me, it's more than Denise, it's, it's 
God Almighty who really yes. saved your life and you yeah. did, we did what we could do. I have another very special patient here. She is like my wife because whenever she has a symptom, she Googles. So, uh, and, uh, this young lady, Caroline, at 3.30 in the morning, she gets up, she has chest pain, she has heartburn. Of course, she turns on a computer, Googles, and the first Google site after a couple of, a minute and a half, it tells her you're having a heart attack, go to the emergency room. But then she doesn't like it, she wants a second opinion. So, uh, so she goes to another site, WebMD, and it tells her the same thing, and thank God she wakes her husband up. And guess what, Gordon? She goes to the wrong hospital. <laughs> she goes to Lakeway Regional Hospital, and uh, Siddiqui is there, and he calls me at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, and finally they have to get an ambulance to get her in from one hospital to the other hospital. And uh, she, if you don't mind me saying, she did cardiac rehab, she did phase 2, phase 3. She is a hero, really. She has a prosthetic leg. Uh, brand new, she shows off each time she comes. It's a computerized prosthetic leg, but despite all that, she did cardiac rehab, and you set an example for all those people who make excuses for not exercising, really. So, and then after this happened with Caroline, I went up to our cat lab team and uh, Sharon and said, We've got to do something. Patients can't be going to the wrong hospital when they have a disease which can be treated appropriately at only one hospital, which is Morrison Hamlin Hospital. So we talked about uh, ambulance people, we talked about uh, radio interviews, and nothing was working. Finally, I went to Gordon and told him, so you know what Gordon did? He went to Home Depot and Lowe's and bought some big plywood uh, uh, plywood the sheets and boarded up Lakeway Regional Hospital. <laughs> I, I mean, this might be funny, but uh, we are in a dilemma because we have only one hospital in town. There's only one tertiary care referral hospital in the eight counties, and it's up to us to step up to the plate because they can't blame anybody else. It's, it's us. Okay, it's always us. So then we'll go to Kathy, Chris, Christy. Christy is dressed like she's going to the Oscars. I <laughs> keep my eyes off you, Christy. <laughs> So Christy, what happened? I don't know what she was doing on December 5th, uh, 2017. Uh -huh. she, was, uh, she was working in the cafeteria in one of the Cosby high schools or middle schools. Uh -huh. And she had some heartburn and chest pain. She collapsed suddenly. And uh, she went into cardiac arrest and she started seizing. And thank God that high school was given a gift of automatic internal external defibrillators, ADs, like what you guys did recently. So somebody, the uh, security officer or somebody yes. got the AED, he put the patches on, it said, step back, shock advised. And they shocked it a couple of times. And then what happened, EMS was called, the Cork County EMS. She was put on the ventilator. And then there was, usually they go to uh, Newport Hospital. But then this EMT technician knew me, the EMT driver knew me, and he called me and said, if you got a STEMI, a patient who is sick, are you ready? I said, bring her on. Because the words he said was, had I taken you to Newport, had you gone to Newport, they would have called in an air ambulance, it would be another hour, so in 20 minutes he brought you to the cat lab, and thank God we were able to get you better. Your friend and your sister was very concerned because for the first two days you didn't talk much. I said, give her a little time. So Christy is back. Christy is, uh, so really, I mean, it's little things like this, what we do in the community. Automatic external defibrillators, and it's always location, location, location. People are afraid to have a stress test in my office. I said it's the best place to have a stress test because if you have a car attack, the hospital is right there. So, so don't, don't do it, but uh, that's... Uh, <laughs> And uh, then we have one other important patient here, I mean, not a patient, a friend. She's more than a patient, Rebecca. So Rebecca was uh, pretty sick, but women are always a little difficult, not just to manage to assess. <laughs> she, she, she was sick, she had a low ejection fraction, not sure how low your ejection fraction was, maybe 15%, 20%. You had come with your daughter that particular day. But she was dressed like this, beautiful, with the pearls and lipstick. And uh, despite all that, I knew you were sick. You were cold, you were clammy, your blood pressure was low, your heart rate was fast. And I don't know if you remember, I told you and your sister, wipe that lipstick off, get in the car, go to St. Thomas Hospital. You need something done fast. And thank God she went there. Within two weeks, you were listed for a heart transplant. And she got a heart transplant. And uh, it's a wonderful 
outcome. So I was just uh, speaking to a heart transplant surgeon in the team and they remember you so fondly. So, so these are uh, some of the examples of patients who are here and uh, of course I could fill a whole uh, crate of all the patients who didn't make it. But all I can say with the sincerest uh, apologies, I can say that we did the best. Every time the cat lab is called, every time the nurses, the CCU, we do the best we can and uh, most of the times we prevail but sometimes the outcomes are not that good. I've got another two minutes. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> exactly. so in, in 1995 to 2019, it's been a wonderful experience. I'll, I'll tell you three little experiences, the good things about uh, living in a small town. One is uh, maybe around six, seven years ago, I was in Chuck's package store because my wife wanted something. <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, and I go there and, they, and the Chuck, the owner said, oh, you took care of my mother or my sister and he gives me a 20% discount. And so he said, then I go to Walmart uh, not too long ago because I had to get a passport, I had to get it renewed and for some reason I needed three pictures. But all these passports, they give you only two. So this lady who runs the, uh, the, the photo unit in uh, Walmart, she happened to be my, my patient and she gave me a whole <laughs> so all, uh, so all pictures of me. If I don't age, I can use it for the next, uh, hopefully, 15, 20 years. <laughs> but the best thing which happened, this is a little morbid, but it's true. Jyoti, your uh, aunt and uncle, you were, they were here a few years ago. They were both elderly, they both had advanced disease, they didn't have children, so they came to Morristown, they flew into Morristown, medevac here from California, and they donated one of the rooms on 3 North. Uh, anyway, they both passed away here, and uh, we go to Mace Mortuary. And Mace Mortuary, the owner, he calls me and says, Dr. Rama, you've been so good to us all these years, <laughs> so he gives us a discount there too. <laughs> uh, so, 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 Really, the, the advantage is a small town. I can't uh, show my three kids here. Remember your beginnings. Remember where you were born. Remember where I used to torture you, take you to all the rounds and procedures. The hospital cannot know this. They used to watch this once in a while. And uh, yeah, whatever you do, remember Morristown. Remember your schools. Remember the wonderful people. Again, we have a lot of people from the community here, the industry here, and. Uh, I am passionate about this and so are you. It can't be one person who can be passionate. It's all my patients, it's the community, it's the hospital. And really I dedicate this award to every physician who does this, every nurse who takes care of her patients, and every member in this community. Thank you.